All right, so settle back. It's a beautiful day. Whatever kind of weather it is, whatever it's whatever's going on out there, it's a it's a beautiful day. A good day to be to be doing this, and it's really my pleasure to to share this uh, this approach um, with you. And this is the second of uh, a talk and a meditation uh, based around the uh, essential principles of uh, of Tai Chi. But having said that, they're not really Tai Chi principles. Um, they are, are life principles. And that, that's an important thing to understand. And that through um, observing my life, uh, what I noticed um, was that the principles are present. Sooner or later, the principles are present. And so I'm just meeting somebody there. So yeah, the principles are present. Meaning that if you look back at the sweep of your life um, over, let's say, a particular problem that you might have had that's really caught you, it could be uh, something that you found very frightening or some, something you found outrageous or something that really got you kind of annoyed. <clears throat> And the, you, you know, you tell yourself the story of it again and again and again, and you kind of get righteous and or whatever it is you happen to be or outraged or you re-trigger yourself in fear. Um, you know, that sort of cycles around and that can cycle around just for a few seconds or it can cycle around for years. It's a particular <clears throat> thing that I'm thinking about that uh, probably cycled around for a good sort of 10 years for me, but whenever, whenever that, that, uh, that experience can arose in my memory, you know, there I would be, and it would happen to me all over again, and I would, you know, remember what I did or didn't do, and then I would berate myself that I should have done this or I should have done that, and, you know, and then it subsides and until the next time, and then the next time, and then the next time. What I observed is that sooner or later, what happens is that as this process repeats again and again and again, at some point, I start to simply become like a witness to that, to that movie. Um, I just become present to it. And that's really the first principle. That I'm no, no, no longer now in the past reliving it. I'm, I'm here, aware that that's going on. And I'm still feeling the same outrage and I'm still feeling that whatever it is. And that may, you know, that may, that stage may, may go on for another few years. Um, again, I'm thinking of a particular episode in my life. Um, not quite as long as the first part to become present, but, but as it would come again and, and as I would be a witness to it, I started to, to kind of feel my tension. I could sort of feel like, what, you know, all that, that kind of reactivity. And I started, as soon as I was aware enough of my tension, I, I quite naturally started to soften because of course we do. It's a natural process. Sooner or later, we start to surrender. Sooner or later, we start to soften. And that's the second principle. And so when that episode comes again, you know, I'm now present to it, when it comes again, I'm, I'm not as triggered, I'm, I'm, it's still there, but I'm, I'm not kind of caught in it. I'm, I'm soft, it's kind of flowing through me. It's still, I still got the same you know, circles of recrimination or accusation or whatever it happens to be, but the whole thing is just much softer. And again, as this process continues, it might take another year, it might take another few seconds, it might take a moment, it might take a week, you know, it doesn't matter, but sooner or later what happens is that I start to see the situation in a new way. I start to see the situation, perhaps not from my personal outraged point of view, but perhaps from the other person's point of view, or from the point of view of an observer. And I start to gain understanding at that point. I start to see myself in a new light. I start to see them in a new light. I start to see what that I could have done they could have done or you know, it could have been different. I start to see instead of the outrage of I should have done this or I should have done that, 
and I start to see other other avenues, more more healthy avenues, more more compassionate avenues, more 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 avenues of action which have understanding. I start to engage heart. You might think of understanding as a start as, as compassion, as empathy, as as heart. And you know, again, as this process happens, I, I start to I start to forgive the person for doing what they did. Out of that understanding, I start to forgive myself out of understanding that I was just you know, doing what I was doing. I couldn't have done any different. I start to understand. I start to have empathy for myself. I start to forgive myself. And you know, that's the third principle, the principle of engaging heart or, or kind of empathy, you might say, compassion, deep compassion. And then finally, I can put it down. You know, finally, with that, with that sense of presence, with that sense of softening and surrender, and with that sense of understanding, um, I, can, I can just put it down. And with this one particular episode that I'm thinking of, uh, in that moment, when I really got that moment, I just put it down. And every now and again i kind of remember it but it just passes through like a cloud you know it's, uh, there's no trigger and um, i'm not disturbed by it at all it's just part of my past and so <clears throat> the principles these principles these these three especially principles are not we call them tai chi principles and we teach them in tmw but actually it's really important to understand that these are life principles you're going to do this anyway and so when I really understood that, my, my, I kind of had this thought, well, if I'm going to do it in 15 years, and then why don't I do it now? <laughs> why do I have to suffer <laughs> for 15 years? If I'm going to do it anyway, if I'm going to forgive this person anyway, if I'm going to surrender to this situation, you know, if I'm finally going to get off my high horse and simply become present, you know, if I'm, why wait 10 years? Why wait five years? Why wait one year? And you know why not just do it now? Why not? Why not? Why not? And so you know the the, the practice of the principles is the developing of that muscle. You know the, the stronger the muscle, then the quicker you're going to be able to become present. The quicker you're going to be able to surrender. The quicker you're going to be able to to have empathy and um, and be the natural, beautiful human being you are and create less suffering in the process, which is a really, really good thing and very important at this time. So that's a kind of brief um, synopsis, if you like, of the principles, and especially to remind you that these are, these are something that you already know, that you already do. If you look in your life, you'll see you already, you already do this. You have already done this. Uh, and the issue is it's not conscious. It's a process, and um, what we want to do as uh, TMW trainers is to um, is to make this conscious. Okay, <clears throat> so um, the the topic for this um, talk and meditation or focus is really that second um, that second movement, and uh, the first one was about becoming present. We talked about being present like an ocean present like a forest. Which is about being in the moment, right here, right now. So another way of thinking about the second, second principle, the second truth. I mean, when I was working a lot with people who were terminally ill, um, I came to understand that you know, when something is um, caught, when something is grasped or held in time, you know, that is the disease. And when something is flowing, uh, that is healthy. And it just takes a few moments of thinking about that to understand how true that is. So flow, allowing something to flow, 
again is a is a natural state you know if you if you look at your hand you see the hand and it and it seems to be something um, unchanging you know, there is my hand it's constant but this hand that i'm showing you right now is already different from the hand that I lifted up into the screen about a minute ago. If you start to contemplate your hand, you'll see it is flow. You know, the blood is flowing, the circulation is flowing, and the nerves are firing off. You know, the, the nails are growing. You know, the hairs on the on, on the back of your hand are are, are moving and growing. You know, the skin is um, wearing away and regrowing from the inside. You know, if you just feel into your hand, what you can what you can feel is this flow. I don't have to make my hand the hand. Hand, be a hand, stay a hand, don't be anything else. I don't have to do that. I just, I just allow it. And the hand, like nature, like the forest, like the great ocean, is just totally released into its pattern. You know, this hand you know, isn't saying, I wish I was that hand, for example. Or this hand isn't saying, you know, that hand, I'm better than this one. You know, it's, it's a feel it. They're just doing their thing. They're just flowing. And they are allowing not only themselves, but others. And so, you know, it's a fairly um, you know, common psychological truth that uh, you know, sometimes we get irritated by other people. And sometimes that irritation is because that person is doing something which we don't allow ourselves to do. So if I'm not going to do it, you're not going to do it. But when we start to bring the second principle in, so, you know, when I'm in that relationship, I'm not going to do it, so you're not going to do it. If you listen to that, there's tension, there's holding, there's control, there's separation. And what you do is you get used to just feeling that dynamic, that dynamic of of rigidity, that dynamic of holding something. And when you understand that the truth of life is flow, then you understand that you're trying to stop the flow of life. And I'm certainly not perfect, but as I have come to allow more of myself to be as it is, I have a greater allowance for others to be as they are. And again, that is the result of the, this, this, this quality you know, of the second principle, which we could think of as relaxation. You know, we could think of as, as flow, as fluidity. We could think of it as you know, allowing. So you know, the muscles uh, left to their own devices um, are perfectly okay. What happens is that the mind kicks in, the mind has fear, the mind has anger, the mind has control, and that reflects into the muscles. So if the mind says to the muscles, relax, and nothing happens, you have to kind of become present, you come into your body, you, you feel, you get the tension, you get the holding, and, and as soon as you get the holding, oof, and the body naturally wants to, to return itself to its true nature, which is flow. So the second principle, depending on how you want to, how you want to see it, um, uh, is a part of life. It's also a process. So we talked about, you know, the first principle is this becoming present. So I become present to myself. 
I notice as I'm listening that my muscles in my shoulders are tight or between my eyes or wherever it happens to be. I notice that and then I understand if I just stay there just a moment and something starts to soften. If I bring uh, into that moment, if I bring this understanding of the second principle, then it's, it's even faster. Um, so it's a, it's a natural process. Um, it's part of life. It's part of a certain sequence of return. Um, so Tai Chi Chuan comes from the Taoist tradition. And you know, if, the, if the Tao, the way of the Tao, which is the Tao, a Tao is a word for kind of perfection or God or the divine or, you know, it's, I like the word Tao because we don't really know what it means. We sort of have an idea of what God is. We can have an idea of what the divine is, but the Tao, it's just a word. And it's kind of like that because nothing, you know, the, the divine or God or mystery, you know, can't pin it down. So even mystery has a kind of, we, you know, in our language, it has a kind of understanding of what that is. And, and so, you know, the divine or God is that, but it's also more than that. So, so the Tao, I like the word Tao. Um, so part of the Tao. And uh, I want to just read from you, to you, sorry. I want to read uh, something from the you know, Tao Te Ching, which is one of my uh, favorite books. And... Um, written by Lao Tzu a very long time ago. <clears throat> and for those of you that might know it, this is uh, verse 28. So know the male, yet keep to the female. Receive the world in your arms. If you receive the world, the Tao will never leave you, and you'll be like a little child. The world is formed from the void, like utensils from a block of wood. The master knows the utensils, yet keeps to the block. Thus, she can use all things. Know the male, yet to keep to the female. And the female is the receptive, uh, the yin of, you know, there's the yin and the yang. You know, the female is the receptive. So from the, from the Tao's point of view, you know, the receptive, know the male, no action, no, yes, that was the wrong thing to do, and da 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 da. but keep to the receptive, hold it, receive it, allow it to be. And when we allow it to be, then we can, we start to be like really flexible. So I hope that's given you an, an idea of uh, the second principle. Enough so that when we come into the meditation, which we're going to in a moment, you can start to sense where I'm, I'm guiding you. And like we said on the last meeting, that um, what I'm about is showing you that you are meditation. It's exactly the same with Tai Chi and, and TMW. You don't do TMW. You, know, you allow TMW to fill you perfectly, as it were. And when, when we, you know, when it really works well, when we move well, when we have that feeling, and all of us have had that feeling, that marvelous feeling of flow and fullness and heart and, and somehow connection to the world and to ourselves and the, and the all as well, you know, even for a second in one of those movements, you know, that's what keeps us going. It's that being touched by the source of something. So, and you, if you try and um, recreate it, you can't, you can't, you can't grasp it, but you can allow it. You can't grasp it. You can't make it happen. And, and even if you try and make it happen successfully, you can only kind of make a, a carbon copy of it. It's not the real thing. And, and we know the difference. 
And in my practice, in my, my experiment, I regard myself as a living experiment. In my experiment, you know, I just notice these moments of magic and, and starts to explore and investigate over many years, what is it that allows that magic to happen? And what I discovered you know, are these three essential movements. That when that magic was there, I was simply present. And more importantly, when that magic happened, I'm in the flow. I'm kind of surrendered, I am surrendered into it. So that's where we want to go. We want to, we want to, um, use this period of, of quiet to sense where I am flow and where I am softness, uh, where I am surrender, so that we can taste it. Um, in Tai Chi, they talk about uh, um, developing your Kung Fu, uh, which means the um, growing your knowing, well, yeah, we got growing your knowing, that's a good one. I don't think I've ever said that before. It should be a good strap line on the back of a car or something. Growing your knowing. But growing your knowing, growing your understanding, growing your reservoir of understanding. Because truly it is the understanding that allows us to be different. It's not the knowledge of the principles. It's the direct knowing of the principles that allows transformation to happen. So something like TMW and something like sitting um, is a way of growing that, that knowing of softness, that knowing of presence. And so over the next sort of uh, six weeks, um, I will be leading you in different ways to, <coughs> to, to feel that. Okay.